Hello and welcome to the eighth and last episode of the Taped Vibes tutorial series. My name is Sebastian and in this one I will show you how you can create a VST sound for the whole instrument. In Halion there is the library creator integrated. You will find it here if you go to open window and to library creator this new window will appear. So on this top right section you see an empty VST sound entry. And this is the place where to start. Let's rename this to Taped Vibes. This is the file name, so you can also name this to Taped Vibes Samples or whatsoever. But let's stay with Taped Vibes. Let's also give it the name Taped Vibes. So this is the name that will appear in the library creator. In the top left section you see various properties. So there's the name and the long name. So let's give them both Taped Vibes as property. And the family must be Halion Sonic. You could also create instruments that are Halion only, but in this case we want them to be also accessible in the free Halion Sonic version. So next you have to enter your manufacturer name. Uh, in my case it's Steinberg Media Technologies. And uh, you can also add your website and you'll have to define an output path. And this is mandatory as you can see by the asterisk. Um, so the output path represents the part where the library is created to. So in my normal taped vibes folder that I created, I will just make a new folder and call this output. And there in um, the final library will be created. So on this top part of this property section, um, there are two places for icons, for the media bay and for the library selector. There is a specification behind. Um, the media bay icon has to be 90 by 90 pixels and the library selector 90 by 60 pixels. So when you create these graphics from your high quality assets, please also um, make a version that is double the size. So 180 by 180 and 180 by 120. So these need the high DPI extensions, the underscore 2.0x.png extension so that the library creator in the end will handle these files as high dpi versions of the regular icon. If you have a look in here into my icons, I placed them in my tape drives library folder and made a folder called icons. So as you can see, I have my library selector icon in here and the double sized one with the underscore 2.00x and the mbx one, which is the 90 by 90 and the 180 by 180 version, which is double the size and underscore 2.00x. So I can simply drag and drop them to the library selector and to the MBX and the high DPI versions will be found as well. From the beginning of the instrument creation you hopefully remember me being a little picky about the resource folder and this is now a big advantage as I can be fully sure that all my resources derive from exactly this location. And this is my tape drives library location. Let's start. I have in my library folder, I have my init taped vibes preset and I simply drag and drop it into my content that needs to be added to the overall VST sound. And as you can see, um, there is a list of unassigned samples um, that appears and depending on how, how big your instrument creation is, this takes a little. Helen is checking in the background all the resources that are necessary for this kind of preset and um, shows these here as unassigned. So, and these are basically all the samples because we didn't add them yet. Let's go to the structure and get to the, the plus icon in here. And as you can see, you have various folders available that you can choose from. And there are actually two audio folders. There's a public and a private audio folder. So for the private audio folders, um, the samples that you add to this folder will only be accessible for the presets using these samples. So if you make your folder public, for example, um, you will have access to these audio files, to the WAV files, to the raw WAV files within Cubase, within Groove Agent, within the Helium Media Bay and so on and so forth. So with these kind of instrument creations, I highly recommend doing a private audio folder because you actually don't want to have the different kind of velocity steps from this Wurlitzer recording or the different kind of release samples that have been added to the library. I don't see any reason why to get access to this within Cubase. I make my folder at least private. Now let's go to my overall folder on my hard drive, to my library folder, and there and there are the samples. So the DI, the pedal noises, the preamp and the tape. 
and I just simply drag and drop them to my private audio files. And as you can see, all the unassigned samples um, disappeared. So basically, in this VST sound is now everything that we need for creating this library. So now we have one init layer preset and some private audio files in here. But as you might remember from the final library, you get a few more program presets as well. So, and these are created by using Haley and Sonic, um, where I activated a few of those sections and changed maybe some sub presets, did a little sound design tweaking and so on and so forth. And if you're happy with your preset design, you just go to export program and then uh, you can go for, okay, on my desktop, there's the tape drives folder, there's this library folder, and I created a folder for the VST3 program presets. And therein are all my already um, designed programs. And I will call this one um, tutorial preset. I can give this a category. So for example, a piano. And as I just set the subcategory, the category will set as well. I could also set this a style if it has a certain style, but I can also assign properties. So I can go for uh, maybe it's a distorted sound, it's maybe vintage and so on and so forth. Um, I can set an author as well. I can just type in my name um, and so on and so forth. And then I hit OK. And then this program will be saved on my hard drive. If I'm finished with my program sound design, I can add them to my library as well. So as you can see here, I created in my VST3 presets two folders, one with the layer, it's holding the layer preset, and the program one where all my design program presets are in that are in my final library. So as you can see them here in my library VST3 program presets, these are all my design sounds. So if I'm happy with my design, I can just simply hit on this build library and then I'm good to go. But what I always recommend if you create a library like this, please save this library file. I did it once already. It's um, on my desktop tape vibes inside my whole library creation. I created a, a configs folder and in this configs there is this taped vibes dot library. And this is actually the library file uh, containing all the information, which files are used and which files are combined into this little library. Furthermore, on top of this VST sound container path, you can increase, for example, the version. So if you do an update, you could increase it to two, to three, and so on and so forth. And you can also, which is pretty handy, you can also compress these audio files. It's a custom file format that we are having inside these VST sounds, and it actually makes the overall file size smaller, but being kind of a lossless compression like if you compress your WAV files into a FLUG and so on and so forth. It's a lossless compression that we're using in these VST sounds. Sometimes you see libraries from us, they are having two or three VST sounds combined. So you could add another VST sound. For example, I like to do this if, if I have larger scale libraries so that I have multiple VST sounds holding up the presets and the samples in different VST sounds. And that's simply because if I want to do an update for the preset VST sound, it's not so much download content that the user needs to re-download again. Because if you once downloaded your 20 gigabytes of samples and you get an update for the macro page or for the scripting or for the presets, this information is all in the presets VST sound. So he probably just needs a few hundred megabytes of download and not the 20 gigabytes. So that's why I'd like to split larger scale libraries into various VST sounds. So we are good to go. Um, let's now build the library and uh, let's see if it works. So the library build has finished and you'll get a library creator report. Um, I scale this window a little up. And as you can see in this report window, it's a quite long report and it actually gives you details about um, what files have been added to the whole library and um, if the compilation has been done properly. And in the end, it took uh, 73 seconds of build and it succeeded. And the final VST sound got 429 megabytes. And now you can see in your output directory the VST sound. And this is the one that you can simply share with your friends 
and by double clicking this file, you can simply register taped vibes in your library manager. So that's basically all about the library creation process for this taped vibes instruments inside of Haley. And thanks for staying with me for the last eight episodes, where I showed you almost the entire process of how I created taped vibes. If you have further questions or need more information about Halion, about its specifics, because we just scratched the surface on some little areas, we have a very, very well documented user manual that I highly recommend if you're looking for some answers. And we also have the developer resource that I mentioned many times in this series. And there are also some best practices and examples shown that you can simply copy and paste and try for yourself. And with Taped Vibes, you have another free instrument that you can just open and can have a look beneath the surface and can have a look into the script and to the macro page as well. So thanks for staying with me over these episodes. And I hope to see you soon, maybe with some other Halion topics that I will cover in such video tutorials. See you there. Bye.